Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development for the Biomedical Research Education and Training Department of the School of Medicine. I'm here today with Nicole Speed, who received her PhD from Vanderbilt in Pharmacology in 2010. So welcome back, Nicole. It's good to be here. Uh, so tell us about what you did while you were at Vanderbilt. So I was a graduate student in the Pharmacology Department, and I worked in the lab of Dr. Aurelio Galli where I studied the dopamine transporter and its role in obesity. Um, so what has your path been since Vanderbilt? So after I graduated, I moved to a postdoc at University of Pennsylvania. I worked in the lab of Dr. Ian Blair, where I looked at DNA damage um, using mass spec, so a completely different um, research focus than what I was doing at Vanderbilt. Cool. Um, tell us about what you're doing now. So now I am a strategic consultant with Ethos Health Communications. Okay. Um, I basically, it's a medical communications agency. Okay. Um, what does your job do? What are you basically doing in your job? So my job, our company in general, um, works with pharmaceutical companies. Um, we'll work with the medical side or the marketing side of, of um, a certain drug. And for example, on the marketing side, we'll do the types of speaker programs with doctors, really giving them the medical education about that product. And so we help them develop those materials, prepare the um, slide presentations, and anything else along those lines that helps um, educate and also market to the professional audience, which is doctors and nurses. Okay. Um, and tell me about your typical day. <laughs> if there is such a thing. <laughs> My day has a lot of meetings, a lot of um, teleconferences, um, a lot of emailing. It's very um, multitasking all day long, and it, it's different every day, but that's what I enjoy. Okay, awesome. Tell me about um, how your job is a good fit for you. I think I was um, looking for something that had that multitasking and you never know exactly what's going to happen the next day or even the next hour of your day. An email can come in and you have to handle that right away and put down whatever you were doing earlier. Um, and I think that's always fit my personality. And in research, while I did always enjoy the science, it's very, you know, you kind of know what the day is going to be like and you follow that progression along. And I, I like the having to switch tasks and adapt quickly. Nice. Um, so do you think a postdoc is that postdoctoral training is required for a career um, in, in your field? It's not required, but I personally feel like my postdoc helped me just develop further. Um, it gave me some time to really reflect on what I wanted to do. It allowed me to really work on my resume, um, my interview skills, all that type of things. When, when I was a grad student, I was just trying to get done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I and I also got really heavily, heavily involved in a lot of the activities available at me for me when I was a postdoc. Good. Um, what skills from your PhD or postdoc training do you use in your current job? Um, my critical thinking, without a doubt, that's what our clients look to us for. And that's why my company hires PhDs um, primarily. Um, I would say that's the number one skill that I still use. Okay. What skill sets did you have to gain after leaving your PhD or postdoc position? I think a few. Um, the business world can be very different. I would say communication was the first thing. Um, you really have to be able to communicate efficiently through email, through person conversations over the phone, and do it quickly and be efficient with it. And I think that that's something that I had to gain. Um, what other activities or courses or engagements would you encourage current trainees to seek outside of the lab? I think just about anything you can get involved in. It's not like you have to be involved with it permanently, but you meet people and you make connections. For me personally, I never knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, but the more I talked to people, the more I started to narrow that down. And if I didn't just jump in and get involved in things, I wouldn't have met those people and really tried, you know, started to get a feel for it. Plus, I think it helped me get the job I have. Yeah. <laughs> what are the steps uh, that you took to get your current job? So I was looking for jobs for quite a while. <laughs> when I was at, uh, with my postdoc, I was looking at industry positions, but I was also, I started looking into LinkedIn and finding other Vanderbilt alum 
and doing some informational interviewing to just try to help me also figure out what I wanted to focus on. I also made use of the Career Center Mm -hmm. to help my, to have them read over resumes and cover letters, which I think was a really useful thing as I got further along in the interview process. Um, So I just, you know, you get better and better at it and then it eventually works out. (laughs) Um, What job search or career tips do you have for PhD students or postdocs interested in your field? I think it's important when you interview to be prepared, but also be yourself. I, I actually am involved in interviewing now and people come in sometimes over prepared where they have the answers that sound a little too much like they're from a textbook and you don't get a feel for what the person's like. Mm -hmm. And not that that looks poorly upon the person interviewing. I, you know, I tell they're very prepared. That's a very good thing. But I think, you know, don't be shy to not let who you are come out too. That's what everyone wants to see. How do you network? I try to still use LinkedIn to stay connected to people. Um, I use any opportunities to to be involved and um, just still, you know, and if I meet someone new, give them my business card and make sure to then check in with them later every so often and keep that connection going. Um, okay, so interviewing, do you have any positive or negative experiences you would feel comfortable sharing, including just some advice in general? I think my earlier advice, too, about being yourself is important. Um, I also think that um, you should always come prepared with some stories because behavioral interviewing is really the norm now. And just have a few on the top of your mind so that you're prepared and have something to pull from if you get nervous. Okay. And one thing I did, I... I prepared for the question, tell me about yourself, because that pretty much begins every interview. Sure. And just to have something in your head to get the ball rolling if you're nervous, it just, you know, eases you a little bit. (laughs) Good. Um, Okay, what do you wish you knew as a student or postdoc that you know now? (laughs) I wish as a student I had gotten more involved in things. Um, I think that in grad school sometimes you're just pushing yourselves to get your research done, but it's just as important then to be networking just as much um, only helps it never hurts so um, tell me about your work-life balance what does that look like that's a good question <laughs> it, it can be difficult I think sometimes to have a proper work-life balance especially if you know I've always been a driven person as I think most people who are getting their PhDs are um, but you have to be careful to still put it aside at some point and and get home and make sure you're taking care of your other obligations in your life. It keeps you sane. (laughs) Is there a particularly memorable experience or embarrassing story or humbling event that really stayed with you? My qualifying exam? What happened? (laughs) I was in pharmacology, and so it's always a tough test. And it just stuck with me as something that I'm proud that I got through, honestly. At that time, you know, I was younger, and it it was intimidating, very intimidating. But... I managed to get it done. It was a good feeling. <laughs> good. Um, so what what words of wisdom do you have for current PhDs and postdocs as they enter their job search? I think I would say don't be scared to explore avenues that you might not immediately think would be a fit with you. I personally always kind of shied away from writing, and that's what initially what I got hired as was a medical writer, and then I moved into the consultant role. But I just kept, you know, kept looking at places and then I would interview with the company and get an idea for them. And I think that really allowed me to see once you're in the interview, you can tell if it's a good fit or not, but you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. And it never hurts to go for an interview too. Then you make those contacts Mm -hmm. and you find out more and see what clicks with you. Well, thank you, Nicole, for coming back. We really Mm -hmm. appreciate it. Thank you.